Hey everybody! Uh, so today we're going to be looking at some flash nonfiction from Brevity Magazine. Uh, flash nonfiction is a type of writing that's usually less than 750 words, or in other words, about one page. They're true stories, or sometimes even just parts of a story, like an experience or a moment. And they often feature heavy use of imagery, or in other words, the five senses. So what we're going to what we're going to see a lot of in this story is what we call show don't just tell. Right? We're going to see that the writers really help us to experience what they're going through by sharing lots of details that you can see with the five senses, see hear, taste, touch, and smell. And you've got some examples of show don't tell here that you can pause if you want to look through. Anyway, here we go with the story. It's called Comfort Food by Lisa Olin Harris. This is a story all about people and Southern food. I woo Jean's appetite with her favorite Southern foods, grits, banana pudding, Miracle Whip, and bologna loaf on white bread, French dressing over cottage cheese, sausage gravy over biscuits, pallid sauce so thick with grease that the leftovers will congeal, gray and lumpy. Tomorrow, I will reheat them to mash over her toast. When she first moved in with us, I made things my way. Stir-fry, one-pot dishes, beans and rice. She ate only after fishing out the veggies. If I used tofu, she asked, what's this stuff? And pushed it aside. And yet she bragged, Lisa is such a good cook. Years passed and I learned to reserve a handful of raw veggies for her plate. She loved vegetables as it ended up, just not cooked. Back when I was Todd's girlfriend, Jean invited her minister and his wife, among others, to a dinner party. She cut the greens quickly with scissors and tossed the salad in a large trash bag. She made the entire meal a day ahead, so when the guests arrived, we were all relaxed and ready, and all she had to do was reheat. I remember chicken parmesan that night, a salad with honeyed almonds and red onions. I remember the smell of garlic cheese bread rising as my mother-in-law's minister said grace. I remember bringing the savory bread to my mouth and crunching in to find that instead of garlic butter under the melted cheese, she had spread Miracle Whip, warm and cloying. After a long wash of ice water to get the hunk down, I poked at the rest of my meal. Once I had a ring on my finger, I volunteered to make the cheese bread whenever she cooked Italian. And when I had the Harris name firmly attached to my own by vows, I also picked the red onions out of my salad and laid them on the side of my plate. In recipes calling for milk, I now substitute heavy cream. Jean has lost seven pounds in two weeks, and we're not sure why except the doctor says the mass in her lungs, three months ago just the size of the doctor's retractable pen clicker, is now the size of both of his hands fisted, one over the other. What the test will show, what the future will be, I do not know. What I do know is this, break the sausage apart as it fries in the pan, sprinkle in flour to absorb the grease, add heavy cream and stir until the sauce is thick and no lumps remain. Spoon the mixture over biscuits or toast and grind fresh pepper on top. When I bring it to her, the plate will be warm through. She will take and eat. And there you have it, comfort food. What did you think? Did you notice how the author was able to use details of the five senses, in this case especially food and people's reactions to food, to share with you things about her experience or even about the personalities of the characters? You can check out the link in the description to go read the story on its original website. Using imagery is a really important way to make any story seem realistic and interesting. And the cool thing about using good imagery is that it can make even just a little slice of life story like this about food and eating and relationships more interesting because it helps you to experience that story the same way that the person did who wrote it. So thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this story. There are plenty more short flash nonfiction stories on a variety of topics at Brevity. Be aware that some of them are not appropriate for high schoolers though, just so you know. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, see you next time.